Okay, good morning everyone and uh, welcome to class. Um, I hope you had a good first two hours. Yes, good learning. Ephesians, right? You're learning? No? Ephesians? Okay. So, uh, welcome to class. We'll, uh, before we continue looking at, uh, we, last week we, uh, I mean, on Monday we looked at, uh, uh, you know, two main components in children's ministry uh, is uh, the messenger and the method or the message. Okay. So uh, the method involves the message. So two main things are uh, the messenger and the method uh, through the empowering of the spirit, you know, Holy Spirit can impact uh, the ministry and, uh, you know, can impact our uh, our ministry uh, to children. So we are looking at the messenger and we're looking at uh, the role of a teacher. Um, uh, we looked at it as a divine call and uh, uh, we also saw the differences between uh, who a preacher is and who a teacher is. Uh, so before we move forward, can one of you please lead us in prayer? Anyone? Anyone lead us in prayer, please? Nangi, can I ask you to lead us in prayer? Uh, yes, first. Thank you, Mengi. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the calling, Lord. You have called us, Lord. You said, Jesus, that your word said, many are called, but she are chosen, Lord. And you have chosen us, Lord, to, to be your hand, Lord, and your, your mouth, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you shape our hearts and you'll shape our understanding so that the wisdom we, we apply in teaching kids Lord, we also lead them towards you Lord. and i pray for that you empower pastor Serena teaches us lord and that you will guide our lord and give you the words to use so that we whatever she teaches that lord lord's implanted implanted in our hearts Lord. In the your mighty name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mangi. So uh, we we looked at uh, you know the calling of a teacher is a divine call. Uh, Ephesians four eleven and uh, twelve, where we looked at the offices to which different ministry offices to which uh, Jesus calls uh, um, us. And, uh, you know, one of them is the role of a teacher. And we also saw that Jesus was the greatest uh, teacher. He was more, uh, uh, he, even though he was both a preacher and a teacher, but he was called a teacher more often than a preacher. And we looked at the difference between a preacher and a teacher. Uh, a preacher basically, uh, from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, we see that a teacher exhorts. Exhorts means what? He basically, he or she encourages or urges people to do what uh, is being taught, preached. Um, so exhort, reprove means take to task. Okay, basically take us to task on various issues. Um, rebuke, um, uh, which is basically meaning, uh, you know, uh, uh, admonish, uh, correct, and press uh, the point home so that, you know, it's acted uh, upon. Okay, and uh, uh, we see what preaching is from Second Timothy chapter four, verse two. But we see that a teacher's primary task is to instruct, which means is to teach, to train, to coach, to tutor, to come alongside, to coach and tutor. And uh, a teacher uh, teaches facts, uh, simplifies the truth so that uh, you know the the, pers the children are able to understand, or the audience is able to understand. Illustrates it in different ways applies the truth and looks for a response to it okay some of these components are there in preaching but it's more in a detail uh, in a more uh, in a more one on one way when somebody is uh, teaching so teacher also gives opportunity for questions discussion uh, to make sure that the truth is being understood and uh, helps us how to apply the uh, truth and also the teacher looks for uh, 
uh, response. So a teacher is more than a lecturer. Uh, you know, a lecturer just gives lectures and goes away. So you know the difference in school and college, right? I'm sure you've uh, you've noticed that difference in when you studied in school and when you studied in college. Uh, a teacher is more than just a lecturer, just lecturing, um, but also uh, involves all of the other components. Okay, uh, we'll move on. Um, so, like we said, that uh, you know. Um, uh, we need a messenger and methods are needed to proclaim the message to the empowering of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is very, very essential. So as a messenger, you know, um, it's important that, uh, you know, what is the qualifications uh, for a messenger and a messenger needs to grow and mature in their uh, walk with the Lord. Okay. A messenger needs to grow and mature in their walk with God. So as a teacher, you know, you must grow and you must mature in the things of God, in the walk with faith and, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the gifts of the, the spirit, in, in the way that you uh, understand God's word. You know, just grow in your understanding of the word, uh, word of God. Grow in your understanding uh, uh, of uh, the truths in God's word. Uh, stronger prayer life uh, and a mature and a deeper understanding of the things of God. Okay, and also flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. So, if you have to teach, or if one has to teach, then we must be faithful students. Pastor, we can't hear you, Pastor. Okay. Sorry, the uh, we lost connection. I think the internet connection at Bible College is uh, a little weak today. I also had uh, trouble in my previous class when I was taking for the first years. Okay, um, so you know, uh, even as we teach, or uh, you know, as teachers, we need to be faithful students of the Word. Um, and we don't have to worry because we have someone who's the greatest infallible uh, teacher, that is the Holy Spirit. Yes, the infallible means perfect, dependent, uh, and flawless teacher who is the Holy Spirit, you know. Uh, but even as we have the Word of God in our hands, we have different uh, ways, uh, you know, commentaries, uh, lectures, um, you know, so many things on, on Google that we can uh, look up these verses, learn, um, uh, uh, you know, the truths from God's word. Uh, but 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, Pastor, we lost you. We can't hear you.
sorry, lost connection uh, again. Um, I just uh, asked somebody to read Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. Can somebody please read Second Timothy two, verse fifteen, please? Can I read, Pastor? Yes, thank you. You are best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Amen. Thank you. So. Even though we have uh, the word of God with us, we have the greatest infallible uh, teacher as the Holy Spirit. But what must we do? What does this verse say? We must study to show ourselves approved unto God. Okay. So only when we learn, take time to study God's word, uh, you know, um, uh, not only are we showing us ourselves as one approved of teaching God's word and also I think this whole class I'm going to be saying, sorry, I'm back again. The connection is very weak at the Bible college. I'm not sure why, but uh, uh, it's the third time that we have lost connection. Anyway, we are back again. We'll continue. Uh, so when we study um, uh, God's word, you know, we also receive fresh revelations uh, from his word. And, you know, when we receive fresh revelation, we'll be able to, um, you know, impart what we are receiving. Um, uh, to the children and when we do that you know um, I'm sure that they would be able to um, uh, listen and the Holy Spirit will work and the Holy Spirit will minister to them and speak to them okay uh, if we give children stale food you know what happens right um, they are fall sick uh, and they will totally not be interested but you know when we do our part in just studying God's word and just receiving from him and just, uh, uh, you know, imparting these fresh revelations. Uh, the Holy Spirit will work in these children's life, uh, will minister to them, will speak to them uh, because you are coming out of a time where you are spending time in the presence of God. And even as you do, it's an overflow of your time that you are spending with God, which leads us to the second thing. You know, we need to spend quality time with the Lord. You know, when our ministry is an overflow of our time, because our ministry is an overflow of our time with God, when our ministry um, becomes an overflow of our time with God, we'll see that, you know, students uh, or children will be interested in class. Um, they would listen. There would be, um, uh, you know, less uh, behavioral problems, issues that we have to deal with uh, because you are just assuring the very presence of uh, uh, God. And where the presence of God is, there is freedom. You know, it will break strongholds, bondages. We don't have to worry about all those things. The Holy Spirit will just work. But, uh, you know, uh, the truths will be communicated in a very powerful way and children will just uh, receive from it because it's the Holy Spirit, His presence, His power, His anointing that is just moving in our uh, midst. The third thing is... Uh, you know, uh, as um, as um, teachers, we need to do our part in preparing the lesson well, uh, studying, just praying about our class, our children, uh, you know, mentoring our children, praying for our children. And when we do that, you know, God will do his part of uh, equipping us, giving us uh, the creative uh, 
ideas that we need, the skills that we need, the talents that we need uh, to transform the lives of um, the children. And, you know, as First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24 says that he who called you is faithful and he will do it for you. You know, God is faithful. He will do his part, but it also requires us to do our part. When we do our part in preparing, you know, mentoring children, praying for them, God will do his um, part. But if we do, if we don't do our part and we think, okay, children are just very innocent, you know, uh, and we don't look at them as intelligent, competent beings, like we said in the on Monday, I said we need to look at them as intelligent, competent beings. Uh, we just think of them as you know simple-minded, simple-hearted uh, uh, human beings. We can just tell them anything and everything, and we didn't have to prepare. Uh, you know, then we see that things go haywire. There'll be a lot of confusion and chaos as basically we have not done our part. And then, you know, um, uh, when we look at the end of the year to see, you know, if our lives of our children are transformed, how much they've grown in the things of God, in the word of God, in reading, in prayer, we will see very little growth. Uh, that's because we have not done our part. But when we, we do our part, God is faithful uh, to to uh, complete what he has began in us. And he is actually a God who desires to see, uh, you know, these children grow in the things of God. Uh, he desires the, them to know him, to love him, uh, to move from one level of glory to another level of glory. And he will be faithful in raising a godly generation for his kingdom and for his uh, glory. And remember that verse that says, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Okay. Um, the next thing is, uh, as teachers, you know, uh, we need to have definite uh, objectives. Uh, you know, yes, the the, the ministry that we are involved in, the Children's Church Sunday School, they can have a vision, but there are specific objectives for every children's uh, ministry. And just like a builder, you know, before he builds a building, has uh, a plan in place. He gathers his, uh, you know, uh, the, puts together the plan for the building, looks at uh, the finances, how much what he has, gathers his materials to start building a building. The same way a teacher, you know, uh, must have a definite uh, objectives. And uh, each child must be considered as one in whom certain things are to be accomplished. Uh, so the teacher's priority is to teach the word of God uh, in such a way that every boy and girl, you know, would, uh, you know, these objectives would be uh, fulfilled. So uh, what is the first objective? Oh, sorry, I'm not, uh, because of our, uh, the internet connection, the presentation is not there on this. Okay, let me just share that with you. Okay. Okay, so um, a teacher must have um, definite objectives. Okay, the first one is... Uh, that you know they will be convicted of their each child will be convicted of their need for christ and accept him as their personal savior so that should be our objective uh, that you know we need to see uh, even as we teach children that every child uh, you know feels the need for christ in their life and would accept him as their uh, personal uh, savior the second objective is um, that they will be taught to live by faith and not by sight and to live a life of holiness and service uh, and they would know from the word of God what is right and um, wrong. They will not wait for their friends. They will not look to the world. Uh, they will not look for the reaction of the world or what the world is doing, uh, what the world is saying or Google or what their classmates are saying, their peer group is saying but they would know from the word of God what is right and what is wrong and they will do what is right and what is uh, and not do what is wrong <coughs> sorry and they will live their life by 
faith and not by sight and they would come to that level of uh, or that standard which god has set for us both the old testament and the new testament you know be holy as i am holy so that is the second objective that we must see accomplished in every child's life the third objective is um, that they will know uh, you know how to claim Christ's power and uh, to live and serve God with the power that they receive uh, through the Holy Spirit. That is very, very important. They will know how to claim Christ's power, uh, to live uh, their life, to, uh, you know, uh, claiming Christ's power, uh, whether over the challenges, their difficulties, their weaknesses, their temptations that they face, um, uh, you know, their studies in school. Um, you know, they would um, uh, claim Christ's power over every area of their life, uh, every difficulty that they face. And also they would be at a very tender young age, learn to serve, uh, learn to share the word, uh, learn to flow in science, miracles and wonders uh, through the anointing and the power uh, and the work of the Holy uh, Spirit. OK, so this is uh, should be the teacher's objective. Uh, you know, these are the objectives that the teacher should have. Uh, the main objective is to give every child an opportunity to receive Christ. Okay, that is very, very uh, important. Give every child an opportunity to receive Christ. Important to lead them to an assurance of salvation. Uh, not just, you know, uh, frighten them and say, hey, if you don't accept Jesus Christ and you're going to go to hell, you know, hell is a, is a terrible place. You're going to die there. You're going to burn there. You know, you'll not have your mummies and your daddies. Uh, you'll not have your friend. I mean, you, of course, their friends there, you know, you'll not see auntie there or, you know, not see me there. It's, you know, not through fear, uh, just for them to accept Jesus as their uh, savior, but also teach them the other aspect of um, salvation, which is, you know, receiving Jesus as their Lord over their uh, lives. What does it mean? Okay. Uh, so, you know, uh, how to build them up in the things of um, God, not just uh, giving them a salvation call and just saying, oh, everybody in my class accepted Jesus as a Lord and savior, but we need to take things further and how to get them to live a life of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of having Lord, Jesus Christ as a Lord over every area of their life and building up them up in the things of the uh, of the word, building them up in the things of um, God. So every teacher should basically um, uh, see. Um, okay, every teacher should see each child in their class as a soul who is saved or unsaved. Okay, so you, uh, if they're saved, it's good. Build them up in the things of the faith, in the word, in prayer. If they're unsaved, then, you know, you have the responsibility of sharing the word, uh, the truth of salvation with them and leading them to make a personal uh, prayer uh, or, uh, you know, accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So the teacher must uh, make every effort to win every child to Christ. Uh, you know, Satan will try to put this off and we can sometimes uh, lose, you know, uh, a child for eternity. But it's important that we keep this as our main uh, objective because, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus himself um, assigned this to every believer, the task of winning souls. We read this in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, uh, where Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature so it's the responsibility uh to you know win souls uh for the kingdom of god yes christopher you have your hand up uh yes thank you pastor i know i just want to understand uh, uh the uh the different means to uh you know to to have children at different age groups uh you know be convinced that there is you know uh a need to you know to accept god jesus as their lord and savior and um in that process uh they i i, I would feel that there would be maybe different ways of doing it uh because of the uh of the way the the child will uh, uh respond and the ability to be able to comprehend you know some of some of the uh, uh content that is that is explained to them uh during during the classes 
or during the teaching. So, yeah, I mean, you you mentioned about um, you know, in, in some cases it could be it could be I mean, fear could be one of the one of the uh, you know motivational uh, aspects that uh, that could get them to uh, you know think and think on those lines. Uh, what are some of the others, and how you know how does how does that actually uh, uh, you know how how can it be you know made made as if, as effective as possible uh, to ensure that uh, you know the, that all the children are do do go through that do uh, actually accept uh, Jesus as their as their Lord and Savior? Yeah. Yes, uh, very good point. Thank you, uh, Christopher, for calling that out. Um, uh, you know, if we look at a diff different developmental needs of children in different age groups, the younger age groups, uh, they are looking for more of love and acceptance, right? We said that. So, and they also know that when they do something wrong, they get the punishment, right? So, uh, we and we said in that age group, you know, um, what are the most spiritual needs is, uh, you know, talk about uh, how God loves them. You know, we talk about creation, how God created everything. Uh, Adam and Eve, we also talk about sin, so they know what is sin, how everything that God created right became, uh, you know, was everything was perfect, became imperfect, so they have that understanding uh, how God created everything good, there was no sickness, there was no death, there was no pain, uh, but how everything came into this world, and because of that, how much, how, that's why, you know, we go through pain and sickness and uh, we are sad at times and how we do things that are wrong and, uh, you know, we get punished uh, and how Adam and Eve did wrong and how they were punished and what was the punishment, all this punishment. Uh, but we are also talking about teaching them about God's love. And so we can connect uh, both of that and we're saying, you know, God loved us so much that, you know, uh, instead of us getting the punishment, he took our punishment. Uh, so just imagine if uh, the teacher punishes you and, uh, you know, your mommy comes and says, no, don't punish my daughter or my son. Uh, you know, I will stand out or uh, I will not take the toffee or, you know, you give him the sweet or you give him that, uh, uh, you know, whatever uh, the teacher wants to give. Uh, but, you know, I will take my child's punishment. Or your friend says, you know, we'll take your punishment the same way. You know Jesus. So in in those terms, you understand the developmental needs of the children in that specific age group, and then you speak to them based on that. Uh, you know what they understand. Of course, you know um, grade uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten would understand more of uh, the concept of sin, what sin does, the consequences of sin. So you go into a deeper uh, level there and you talk to them and then uh, you know bring about the salvation message so salvation message can be brought in different ways packaged differently uh, uh, even in, in nicer ways for children different age groups so that they can understand and they can respond uh, you know likewise so for younger age group you can say you know when jesus died when jesus jesus loved you so much you know and he died for you on the cross because he wanted to show you how much he loves you he wants you to be with him uh, in heaven and not be in uh, this bad place called hell where there's fire you know he loves you so much so are you willing to uh, you know uh, show your love to jesus so how can you show your love to jesus you know you can ask him to be your friend you know you can uh, start uh, doing things that are right like obeying your mummies and daddies um, not talking bad words sharing with your friends i'm talking and this is relating to younger age group but when you're talking to older age groups you know you can talk it out in a in a more uh, a deeper way to them but you need to package it uh, in a way that uh, helps them but if you're going to bring in the whole aspect of fear then you know that salvation what you have, what they have prayed is because of fear that they have accepted Jesus, and there is not going to be any change or transformation in their lifestyle uh, because they've just accepted Jesus. Because okay, now I accepted Jesus, I'm going to heaven, I have no place in hell, uh, you know, and all of those things. But you see, there will be no transformation in the way they are living their lives. But it's important to give them a clarity in in both those uh, areas and aspects. So you need to look at the developmental needs of children in that age group, understand what is their needs, and then rest, uh, based on that, you know, relate to them, even in the area when you're talking about salvation or, um, you know, giving them the altar call or whatever. Does that help, Christopher? 
Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That was a, a good uh, insight uh, and thought that you shared. Uh, so we continue. Uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, where Jesus says, you know, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So he's assigned us a task that we need to preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, that's inclusive of children as well. Um, uh, even Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's God's will that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Okay, so that should be the burden uh, of the teacher, not just saying, okay, I went to a uh, class, I engaged the children, they enjoyed the story, I asked them questions, they remembered all the characters, they remembered the entire story. Well, that is a half done job, but uh, if you are able to communicate the truth and through that bring in some aspect of salvation, you know, it is going to uh, benefit for eternity for the rest of their lives. Uh, I'd like to give an example of Edward Kimball. You know, M Edward Kimball was a was a uh, was a Sunday school teacher, and uh, you know his uh, his desire was that all of his children in his class, you know, uh, know the Lord Jesus as their personal uh, savior. So one day he went down to a shoe store in Boston where they were living uh, to lead one of his Sunday school students to. Uh, to accept Christ as their Lord and uh, Savior. Now, little did that man, uh, Edward Kimball, know that this, this child that he is going to share the good news of salvation and ask him to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and lead him in the sinner's prayer, you know, is one day going to become one of the greatest evangelists, and that is D.L. Moody. Okay, so... Um, so D.L. Moody as a child was working in a shoe store and uh, it was his uh, teacher who went down to the shoe store and shared the gospel and led him to uh, Jesus Christ. But before Edward Kimball entered the bookstore, you know, uh, he, want, he gathered a lot of strength. He was uh, not very confident. He did not know whether it's the right time, the right uh, place to go and ask Moody to accept Christ. So he kept walking down the street a couple of times, you know, not not very sure. Uh, uh, he he also says that his courage failed. Uh, you know, he was not very confident to go into the bookstore, so he kept walking up and down that store, gathering strength to go in to ask Moody to accept Christ. But he eventually did, and uh, we see, uh, you know, just a teacher taking that uh, initiative. You know, that teacher taking his role. Uh, his calling so seriously that ensuring that every child accepts Christ, doing that even during the weekday, going to the, sh uh, the shoe store where this uh, boy was working and led him to Christ. And uh, we see that D.L. Moody becomes a great evangelist who leads many to uh, uh, Christ. Okay, uh, So it takes great courage, yes, to win souls. But uh, if that is our desire, the word of God says God grants us the desires of our heart right when it's our desire that uh, we see every child accept the, the lord jesus as their personal savior and walk in holiness and become uh, great men and women for him building his kingdom you know god will give that to us so a teacher's objective is to give every child an opportunity to receive christ and lead them to the assurance of salvation and to build them up in the things of uh, god okay so um, that is the uh, command, uh, sorry, that is a qualification that uh, we saw uh, in a messenger. And also the messenger has a command. What is a command? Look at Psalm chapter 78, verses 5 to 7, please. Can somebody read that? Psalm 78, verses 5 to 7. And to read, Asha. So that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. Thank you. So here we see that uh, God commanded uh, his people to teach 
the next generation, his ways, his laws, his commands, and uh, you know all that he has done, so that they would not be rebellious, arrogant, and stubborn, uh, but they would you know um, uh, put their trust in God. They would not forget his deeds, but keep his uh, commands. So this is a command that God has given to us. So as messengers, as teachers, it's important that we need to teach, tell the children. Uh, what God has done, uh, tell, uh, teach them his laws and commands, his precepts, his ordinances, his decrees, so that, you know, children will know God, they will put their trust in God, they will not forget him, and they will keep his laws and his uh, commands, okay? So we looked at the messenger, we'll uh, go ahead to see the methods that we need to use. Before uh, we look at the methods, anyone has any questions, anything you'd like to share? Any questions? Pastor, I just wanted to know, uh, you know, how, how, uh, where you are in the, on the notes. Uh, um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, Christopher, why you didn't ask? Because, uh, yeah, I will uh, post the notes. Sorry, um, I've just been working, uh, reworking on the notes, actually. Um, and uh, also being tied up with a lot of other things. But uh, I'll post uh, the notes on the learning style. So everything what I'm teaching, uh, all that is in the PowerPoints will be there in the notes. So I will post um, uh, the notes on the learning styles, the eight intelligences, uh, you know, about... Um, uh, you know, the uh, what I just thought about, the role of a teacher, uh, the calling, the command, everything, I'll, I'll have these notes ready and I will uh, post it uh, by the end of this week or uh, by Monday. Okay, is that okay? Sorry about that. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Okay, anyone has any questions, anything you'd like to share? Okay, so uh, in Sunday school or in children's church, uh, the messenger, uh, the messengers and the methods are needed to proclaim the message uh, through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we looked at what a messenger should do to effectively proclaim the message. Uh, in this lesson, uh, you know, uh, we we'll, uh, look at now the methods uh, that a messenger or a teacher should incorporate uh, to effectively communicate the message in a very relevant and a very productive way uh, to uh, children. Uh, so we look at uh, how to, you know, prepare a curriculum, uh, how to prepare a lesson plan, what are the different components that we need to include in the uh, lesson plan, okay? Um, so the methods would basically uh, involve uh, choosing relevant topics for the children that we are teaching. Um, and then based on each topic or subtopic, you know, preparing uh, the lesson plan. So when you have all of this, you know, in place, uh, it just helps um, uh, the messenger to communicate. And also there is a, a, a systematic way that we are teaching children, uh, which will also help benefit um, them. So when we are choosing topics, how do we basically prepare a curriculum? Uh, we basically prepare a curriculum uh, by uh, choosing the right topics, okay? Um, so you choose the topics based on the developmental needs of children in that specific uh, age group, okay? Uh, so for example, if you're teaching the, um, uh, the uh, lower, kin you know, children ages uh, five, six, seven, you know, uh, uh, upper kg, grade one, grade two, or you're teaching when the low kg and upper kg in grade one, then you can basically talk about uh, creation, you know, um, how God made everything perfect, uh, how God, uh, you know, created the world uh, in, in six days, what he did on the seventh day, how he created Adam and Eve, how we are created unique and special. Uh, so we can talk about creation, we can talk about um, uh, also, we can talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, how he created Adam and Eve. Um, 
but if you're talking to uh, age groups uh, for example grade four five and six you can talk about creation uh, but also talk about how jesus is a creator uh, you can use uh, narratives like jesus stills the storm how god made the sun stand still um, then you can talk about how you know we are valuable to God and to others. So you can talk about uh, uh, the use narratives like uh, you know how Jesus uh, raised Jairus' daughter back to life, uh, the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. I'm just giving you uh, one or two examples. You know, uh, then you can talk about God's another topic uh, in the curriculum can be God's love for them and how God loves everyone, their family, their friends, their neighbors. Uh, because we saw these are the requirements of children in this specific age group. So you can talk about the prodigal son, Zacchaeus, um, Jonah, how God loves sinful people, how he sent Jonah, how he loves Jonah as well, saved him uh, from, uh, you know, uh, the fish's belly uh, and, uh, you know, how Jonah went to Nineveh. So basically talking about God's love and how he loves everyone. And then you can, another subtopic can be how God knows you. So you can have narratives on how God knows our needs. He provides for us. So, you know, Jesus feeding the 5,000. Uh, Bartimaeus, God providing manna and water in the desert to the Israelites. Um, then another point is God hears our prayer. Uh, how God protected baby Moses. He heard the prayer of his uh, of his uh, parents and uh, Miriam and Aaron as well. Uh, how God hears our prayer, Jehoshaphat, uh, Jonah praying in the uh, you know the belly of the uh, the fish. Uh, how God hears our prayer and answers. God is dependable, trustworthy, always good. So you can talk about uh, uh, Abraham, Sarah. God's promise to them, how he kept the promise, uh, Daniel in the lion's den, uh, Joseph, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So all of these narratives can talk about how God is dependable, trustworthy, and always good. And, um, you know, there's a difference between right and wrong. So you can talk about uh, Adam and Eve, how they sinned against uh, God, uh, Achan's sin, how Achan, uh, you know, stole things when God told them not to take away things from the city of Jericho when they went to destroy the city. Elisha's greedy servant Gehazi. Uh, you can talk about Ananias and Sapphira. And then you can go on to talk about, uh, you know, how we sin, uh, how Jesus came to pay for our sins. So, you know, when you talk about uh, sin, you can talk about how all of us have sinned. Then the woman caught in the act of adultery can be a good narrative. God sees our sin, Achan's greed and disobedience, the cost of sin, you know, Cain and Abel's sacrifice. Um, uh, you know, there was a cost that we have to pay a consequence. God warned Cain, but he did not heed the warning. Okay. And uh, how he faced the consequences and how Jesus is the answer. Um, uh, that is to Adam and Eve's how they disobeyed God, how sin came into the world and how Jesus died on the cross. Um, and also, you know, because of what Jesus did for us, we can live for him forever. We can accept Jesus as our savior. So this is basically I'm talking about ages, uh, you know, the upper KG grade one and two, because these are some of their developmental needs that we saw for children in this age group. So um, I'm just helping you. Uh, uh, you know, running through one, uh, uh, you know, uh, curriculum that you can prepare for that specific age group. But based on the developmental needs of children for different age groups, you can look at the needs, what are the spiritual needs, how you can minister to their needs. And then you can, you know, have different topics and, you know, uh, you know, bring in different narratives to fill in those uh, subtopics. So basically presented um, uh, some subtopics here about creation, how God created everything perfectly, how God made us unique and special, how God loves us and loves everyone. God knows us. God hears our prayers. God is dependable, trustworthy, always good. There's a difference between right and wrong and then talking about sin and uh, salvation. So that can be uh, something, sorry, <clears throat> sorry, that can be something that you can plan for one whole year. And then, you know, when these children move to the next uh, section, you can have, uh, you know, uh, a different um, 
uh, you know, uh, curriculum for them, but you can also have the same uh, topics and subtopics, but different narratives and teaching them in a more uh, uh, deeper way. Uh, so just to talk about our children's church uh, curriculum, you know, when I um, took over children's church at, at APC, um, basically I thought, you know, we can use the same curriculum that we have been, that I had written out for our school outreach ministry. I was, I basically joined APC uh, to take, uh, you know, to start the school outreach ministry and I was like, okay, let's, uh, you know, use the same curriculum that we have written for uh, uh, our Catalyst program, that is APC School Outreach Ministry. Basically, in the Catalyst School Outreach Ministry, I started off with who Jesus is, talking about he's our creator, he's our healer, uh, he's our provider, uh, you know, he uh, uh, he saves us and all of those things. And then talking about going on to sin and salvation and then going on to uh, uh, right attitudes and wrong attitudes. So you know various uh, uh, things in the what are the wrong attitudes what are the right attitudes and various narratives uh, to fill in for that and it's basically written for children in schools uh, from different religious backgrounds so it's uh, also packaged with um, values uh, uh, for in each lesson uh, but when i spoke this to pastor he had a very different uh, picture he was like uh, why not we use all of the you know, the things that we teach, courses that we teach in Bible college, because he felt that the children in uh, in children's church had come to a level where they know most of the narratives that need to be taken to the next level. And he said, uh, you know, look at it this way. You know, when we teach them all of the uh, content of the courses that are taught in Bible college, by the time a child leaves 10th grade and they leave, children's church and they come to adult church they will already be in a position where they needn't have to be taught you know god's word but they'll be in a level where uh, you know um, they are uh, ready to minister as well and also in a level where they can take on the teachings that are taught in the adult church and i thought it was a, was a very good uh, you know plan and uh, so we started writing our children's church curriculum uh, for the various topics in uh, that uh, courses that are taught in Bible college. So we basically have three levels, level one, level two, and level three. Level one is for grade two to four. Level two is for grades five to seven. And level three is for grades eight to 10. So, you know, if you're talking about biblical covenants, then we have uh, tailor-made it for each level for their grades. So when they move from one grade to another, they move from one level to another level. So they're learning. Uh, you know, deeper um, uh, when they come to the next level, more about covenants. When they come to the third level, they're learning more about covenants. So also for Holy Spirit, um, you know, biblical doctrines, uh, Old Testament, uh, New Testament. So that is how we are writing our uh, children's church curriculum. We're still writing on some of our topics. And if you want to access them, uh, they are available on our APC website. You can access uh, all of those uh, lessons that have been written for various topics for all of these, uh, all of the three uh, levels. Okay, I'll stop here. Uh, we'll con we'll look at how to write out a lesson plan um, uh, the next uh, week. Uh, and before we end class, anyone has any questions? Any questions? Okay, uh, there are no questions then. Uh, just want to uh, discuss about, um, just before we end class, about our um, first assessment. Um, can, uh, can we have, when can we have the first assessment? Sorry? Do you like to have it on a weekday or a Friday? We'll discuss that first, please. Uh, the assessment, do you like to have it on a weekday or a Friday? Because I remember last uh, semester you all, you all liked it on a, during the weekday, right? Hello, everyone. Uh, weekday or yeah. Friday? Weekday, ma'am. Weekday, please. Uh, the date? I'm, uh, yeah, we can fix the date based on whether you want it in a, to do the assessment during the weekday or on a Friday. So Kennedy says Friday. What about the others? Is all are all of you okay for a Friday? And you can submit it on a Saturday. Is that fine? 
Yes, Harrison. Friday is fine. Okay. Okay, so most of you are uh, okay with the Friday, uh, and you can submit it on a Saturday. Can we have it on a Thursday, Friday? Can we have it Friday, Thursday, or Sunday? Okay, we're having it on a Friday. Uh, so which date can we have our first assessment? Yes. Sorry? Can we have it on the um, 10th? Is that okay? Feb 10th? March. Oh, sorry, March 10th. You mean Friday to Sunday? Oh, it's quite a long. Okay, Friday to Sunday. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Maggie. Friday it is. Okay. Uh, so, can we have it on March 10th? Is that fine? First assessment. Yeah, and I'll, um, uh, you know, put up the uh, the lessons uh, which, uh, you know, you'll have the assessment on. Is that fine? Or uh, is third fine? What is convenient for all of you? Third or tenth? Third or tenth? Tenth. 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 Okay, tenth. Fine. Okay, we'll go with tenth then. Okay, thank you everyone. I'll uh, uh, post the notes uh, by this weekend or latest by Monday. Um, have a good day and rest of the week. Yes, Christopher. Uh, yes, Pastor. Just, just, a, just a, a point to um, note is that uh, uh, you know in um, in the previous assessments. I mean, I mean, talking about the previous semester uh, as well as reply in this semester also. Uh, particularly in the case of uh, you know the, the session around uh, you know the the Bible uh, Bible study or the Bible uh, the books, uh, is it possible um, that you know uh, in the in the videos uh, that are uh, that are recorded, some there's just a, a very very brief um, uh, you know um, uh, description about you know what is there in the content of that video uh so that uh you know if we need to refer to a, to a, to the video for um for answering a question it just helps us to be able to get to that particular video uh you know to be able to uh, uh you know to, you know it, i mean it, it just helps us in that way so is there any way to do that uh, pastor at least or maybe just some you know brief content about you know which which biblical which which uh uh, you know, which book? Oh, you mean which it? question? Uh, which uh, uh, the question is in which uh, lesson? Is that no, 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 no. I didn't mean that way. I meant that in the video itself, uh, there mm -hmm. is a there is a mention of that. You know, in this video, we are covering this 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 portion of the of the book, so that oh, uh, yes. when we okay. when we are when we are answering the question, um, um, it, it may it, we will it'll help us to decide you know which which video would we, we, we would need oh, to revisit to and uh, you know, that will oh. definitely help us yeah yes because uh, if you look at it in the e learning uh, we do post that I post that you know with the video I put a short summary so they know uh, you know in which video uh, what has been taught uh, last uh, last year i used to put portions covered but this year i'm not but every video of course has a summary for every class so uh, students know so that means i'll need to go back to all the videos for the online students and add that uh, I'll, I'll 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 see how i can do that because it'll take some time but i'll i'll try doing it yes okay. thank yeah. you so much okay thank you christopher maybe that's a good thing to follow in the the next videos that come up, we can just put a small summary. Okay, thank you everyone for joining class. God bless. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.